little bit um, to see how see how it's moving and understand what's still not constrained. Um, now the last thing we're going to do is add some dimensions to this sketch. So the first one I'm going to add, um, I'm going to click my constraint tool, the lower one here, and I'm going to select this edge, uh, which if you recall from the example we saw uh, is, um, is the edge that we had the 15 degree angle on, and we changed that to 30. So I'm going to select that edge, and I'm going to select my vertical direction. And so right away it knows, since I selected two, two lines or two, two, um, two directional elements, in this case uh, it's going to give me an angle. So I click that. I don't need to do anything with that right now. I'll click that tool again. And I'm going to select just that, just that line. And right away it gives me a length constraint. Uh, dimension object here. So I'm going to put in a in a place that I can see it, click, and I'm going to select that, uh, that tool just one more time. And I'm going to constrain the horizontal line. And you'll see once I do that, that the whole sketch turned green. So if I if I tried to take a, uh, an edge or a point now, it's not going to move at all. So it's fully defined. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is now now these dimensions are kind of arbitrary. I want to make these dimensions um, the the proper amount. So in this case, I'm going to double click this angle dimension object, and I'm going to make it 15 degrees. I'm going to double click this dimension object. I'm going to make that 50 feet. So put my little feet there. And I'm going to double click the horizontal direction and make that 100 feet. So you can see um, it kind of works a little differently than a, than a, than a typical uh, drafting environment where you, you draw the lines as they should be and then you if you need to know what something what some dimension is you add a dimension after the fact in this case you add the dimensions you change the dimensions and that drives the position of the sketch so the workflow is a little different um, but it uh, it definitely um, makes for a more powerful uh, tool for changing the overall model. Now the last thing I'm going to do is um, output some of these elements. So right now this this sketch, uh, if we exit the sketch, this outline is going to be um, perceived uh, exterior to the sketch as one element. This is going to be one closed outline. But I want to use each one of these edges for a different purpose. So in order to kind of split up and, and use the different elements of the sketch separately, I need to go down to uh, the output feature tool here. And if I want to keep any tool uh, that I'm using here active, um, instead of having to press the button uh, each time, I can just double click. And that keeps that, keeps that tool active um, until I hit the escape button. So I'm going to I'm going to select the lower line. I'm going to go around um in a clockwise fashion selecting e each one of the edges and you'll see as I select it it gets a little thicker. And if I were to go over here to the tree, expand the sketch under outputs, you'll see that when I click one of the edges, it'll place an element inside the outputs here. So I'm going to select all four edges, and then I'm also going to select all four points. So I want to make sure that when I'm mousing over, you'll see right now I have the line selected, but if I just kind of mouse over, I can see a little point in orange. And so that means I have the point selected. 
So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to select each one of these, these points to output. And once I'm done, I'll hit Escape. So that makes, that makes the tool down here no longer active. So now we've built the, the perimeter sketch, which is going to drive the rest of the model. Um, now I'm done with the sketch. Um, I'm going to go over here to the upper right, Exit Workbench. You can see it kind of looks like the sketch tool that we, that we click to enter, um, only it has a little arrow exiting out. So now you can see, um, I no longer see that, that, that uh, construction line because that's not something we're going to use exterior to the sketch. It's only internal to the sketch. Um, and if I want to, I can rename these, these elements. So like in this case, um, if I right click the first southern edge and go down to properties, and over to Feature Properties. I can call this South and this one I'll call West and North and finally East. It makes it a little easier to refer to the elements if I if I name them properly later on down the road. Especially this is especially good convention if you're um, working in team. Um, naming your elements properly will make your life and their lives a lot easier um, if you if you have conventions and you follow those conventions for naming the different elements. Um, so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select, hold down the shift key, and select all those elements and hide them for now. And you can see I'm left with four points. And I'm going to use those points to create four vertical lines, 3D lines. So uh, I'm going to go over to my, my line tool over here. And it gives you, when you're creating a line, it gives you several options at the top here for, for creating. Um, the first one is point-to-point. Uh, point. In this case, when we use point-to-direction. So these are the inputs. First, it needs a point. I'm going to select this output point here. It needs a direction, so I'm going to select my XY plane. And that's basically going to tell it to go in the vertical Z direction. And um, finally, I'm going to give it a height. So in this case, um, the height should be, I believe, 8 feet. So the start stays at 0, and the end should be 8 feet. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to click my, my line tool again. And it should already be set at point direction. So I'm going to select my point. And I'm going to select my direction, my XY plane. And it's set at 8 feet. I'm going to make that 18 feet for that, for that side. And the third one here, I'm going to do again. I'm going to make that 8 feet. So, so the two sides are symmetrical. Now, the last one um, is going to be the, the tallest end. And that's actually going to be driven by a plane. So now I want to create a plane. Um, up to this point, we've used the default planes that are, that are created in the part when we when we um, we first made the file so I want to go over to my plane tool and just like the line tool it gives you several options for defining the, the plane 
and the first option is offset from